Welcome to another video tutorial from 2dgameartguru.com. Today I'm working in Affinity Designer to create editable text effects. I'll be using symbols to combine the text with layers of effects. There are a lot of editable Photoshop and Illustrator text effects out there. The problem is they don't always work in Affinity Designer, or at least not the way they are supposed to, partly due to different functions or missing functions in Affinity Designer. Let's build effects on the functions that are included in Affinity Designer. Prior to recording this video, I played around with some effects, and as you can see, I can select the text, edit it, and the whole design changes and adjust to the new text I type in, no matter how complex the design might look or how many layers make up the effect. Let's start by looking at the effects and apply them to a simple graphic text. I like to use fonts that have a certain width in order to be able to display the effect. I start by giving the text a color and then open up the layer effects panel. It has a slightly different look in version 2. The order of the effect has changed to represent the hierarchy in which they are stacked. During the whole recording of this video, I forgot one crucial step, and that is to turn the scale with objects on, so your effects scale neatly with the object. Don't do what I did. Remember to tick that box. I start with an outer shadow and alter the shadow color to be a tad softer. The black tends to look a little dead, so I change it to a deep purple and then add a bevel. I set it to inner so it only affects the inner shape of my text. Again, I set the shadow color to a purple rather than the black. You can play around with the different profiles or create your own profile. This defines how the light and the shadow look on the edge of the text. You can also use the 3D instead of the bevel to add depths to your text. It has a slightly different, maybe a little bit more complex setup. When working with multiple effects on the same text, keep the light direction in mind. The bevel, outer shadow and 3D don't have the same default light direction. Instead of increasing the light with the 3D, I can also change the light direction and have a rim light coming from the other direction. This increases the glossiness of your letters. At this stage, I'm running into problems because the shadow of the 3D interferes with the highlight of the bevel. The 3D has no option to take the shadow off. This is where the multiple sets of effects based on symbols come in. I'm adding the gradient as a gradient and not as a gradient overlay because they are just a tad harder to adjust and can't be stored as a swatch. I start with a duplicate, remove all the effects and make it a symbol. I use that symbol and group it and copy the effects that I created earlier to this group and something went wrong. All the sizes are off. I have no idea why that happened, but at least my settings as far as direction and colors go are still right. So I adjust the values and I have the same effects on a group that holds a symbol that holds the text. This might sound a little complex, but assigning the effect straight to the symbol means all the symbols will have the effects. By assigning them to the group, I can change the effects and the symbol stays unchanged. I duplicate the group and assign the 3D effect to this new group, taking off the other effects and assigning this 3D as well as a color overlay. I want the whole thing to be black, by changing the blend mode to add, it'll just show the highlights. That's the theory. It didn't quite work. The effects override the blend mode. I need to group the group first and then assign the add to the top group for it to work. I can now change the text inside the symbol. Both groups change instantly. The basic effects as well as the layer on top with just the 3D highlight. 
This approach is not limited to two groups. I can add more groups. Let's make the shadow more editable. I remove the outer shadow, duplicate that layer, give it a color overlay and a Gaussian blur, allowing me to color and position the shadow a lot more freely. I can also duplicate that layer and give it different opacity to soften the shadow from the top left to the lower right. Let's add one more group and add depths to the text. I duplicate the top layer, move it up a little bit and change the effects on the new group below. I remove the bevel and add a color overlay in a darker shade. That way the letters appear to have some depths to them. It might work even better with a gradient overlay instead of the color overlay. I change that to a gradient in the same darker shades going from the top to the bottom to match the pink gradient of the letters. As a result, I have seven different groups with different effects assigned to them. Using the text tool, I can go in, alter the symbol and all layers will be adjusted instantly. This might seem rather confusing, but once you play with it and get the hang of it, it is fairly simple to create your own effects. Let's do another design with some different effects. Remember that not all effects work on all fonts. It is always a matter of choosing the right font for the effect you have in mind. I start by turning the text into a symbol and grouping the symbol. Just remember to assign the effects to to the group and not directly to the symbol. I start with a color overlay and the Gaussian blur for the shadow shape, lower the opacity and place a duplicate on top. Give that a different color overlay and then add an outline. The outline will not take on the color of the overlay. It is in the hierarchy above it, so I need to color it. A wider shape also means I have to widen the shadow. So I go back to the bottom layer, adjust the outline there to match the layer above. And then the Gaussian blur is affected because the outline sits above the Gaussian blur as well. I assign the outline to the group, group it again, and then assign the Gaussian blur to the top group. That way both the outline and the Gaussian blur work. I repeat the approach for the green layer, group it again, add an inner shadow to just get a little bit more contrast, and then duplicate that layer for a lighter version on top. I remove the inner shadow and add an inner glow, change the colors for the overlay and the outline in the layer below. I switch to the group above and adjust the inner glow to be more visible. I duplicate the layer again, remove the outline and the color overlay. Now I'm left with the white text. I add a color overlay set it to 30% to shade this layer and give it an outer shadow to show that the text has a volume sitting on top of the green plate. It casts a shadow. Adjust the color to soften it and match the green plate that the shadow is cast on. And then at the top layer, I move it slightly to create the illusion of depth and then add a bevel to this one. I set the bevel to inner and give it a profile. I lower the opacity of the shadow to make it rather soft and increase the effect of the color overlay in the group below. Just like in the design before, changing the symbol changes all layers. Not only can I change the text, I can also change the font or change the look of the symbol. I can add a gradient. Having used color overlays on the groups below, they won't be affected as the overlay overrides the gradient. Adding an HSL adjustment layer is a quick way to change the color scheme of the whole design or placed below the two text layers, it would just change the colors of the plate below. 
For the next design, let's go very shiny and glossy. I start by adding a gradient. The gradients are just simpler to adjust and exchange than the gradient overlays in the effects panel. I group the symbol and assign the effects to the group. I start with the color overlay and the outline. If the slider does not allow you to go far enough, you can always enter the value manually. I group the group again to apply the Gaussian blur. And as I'm not quite happy with the way the color looks, I add a gradient overlay that shades from a dark red to a lighter color in the center. I duplicate the group to create the layer above, which will be another plate that the text sits on. I use the same outline for this one as I did for the shadow layer. Add a gradient overlay to the group above, shading from dark red to lighter red, and add an inner bevel to create some depths. Next, I duplicate the layer. Add a black color overlay and a 3D highlight. I create a rim light moving the direction to the very top and for an additional second light to the very bottom. I group the group again to add the blend mode screen. Just like the add, it will hide the black and just show the highlights, adding extra glossiness to the red plate. The next layer will create the depths for the letters. I offset the top layer a little bit, add a color overlay to the layer below, set it to red and add an outer shadow. I want to shade this from darker to lighter at the top. Rather than define a red gradient, I use the color overlay in the layer below and a gradient overlay set to multiply with just the grayscales in the layer above. The group at the very top will get an inner bevel with a red shadow color to reflect the red plate it sits on. I adjust the direction to match the shadow and have the light come from straight down. To increase the glossiness, I want to add a 3D light on top. If I put that in the group above, it will interfere with the bevel. You can see the edges now get rounded as well. In order to keep them nice and sharp, I add a layer at the top. I duplicate the black layer from below, place it at the top and change the effects here. Take the outline off and place the 3D further inside my letters to get a, a very high gloss look. To achieve that, I ramp up the specular value and lower the shininess. The result is a very glossy look for those letters. Let's increase that look by adding some flares. I create a star, adjust the shape and the color, add some blur and place it on top of my letters. The problem with these edit elements is they are not connected to the symbol or the text that is inside the symbol. That means by changing the text, these objects won't get changed. They need to be manually adjusted. I'm not quite happy with the size of the red plate, so I change the outline in both groups for the red plate as well as the shadow. For the last design in this video, I'll work from the top down, starting with the highest layer, the text at the very top. A font like this lends itself to a metallic look. In order to create that, I start with an inner bevel, set it to really high so it cuts into the center of the letters.
I have a grayscale gradient, which kind of looks metallic, but I don't really fancy the pure grays. So I add a tint of color, a variation of a royal blue and an aqua blue at the top, and then add a 3D effect to that. It brightens the letters and gives them a sharp highlight at the top. Again, I ramp up the specular and lower the shininess. I duplicate the layer, remove the 3D and the inner bevel, and add the outline for a plate instead. With these effects, it can happen that there are rendering issues. The left side seems to be cut off. If I zoom out or if I group the group again, the, the display issue disappears. I color the plate with a gradient overlay. and add an inner bevel to add depth to this plate. The shininess of this material would be lower than the metal. Instead of white, I use an orange tone and reduce the opacity. Even though they are not as simple to adjust as the normal gradient, the gradient overlays are adjustable. I change the colors to make the bottom darker. I duplicate the group to create the shadow, taking off the gradient overlay and adding a color overlay and a Gaussian blur. Another duplicate will act as an indent into the brown plate. I remove the effects and add an outline, a color overlay, and an inverted inner bevel. I set the bevel to inner and click on invert, which flips the highlight and shadow and turns the shape from being elevated to being indented. I add a color overlay to match the brown shape of the plate below. Adjust that to be slightly darker and then adjust the highlight of the bevel to match the shape below. And finally, I add an outer shadow to the text group at the very top to make the text stand out more from the brown plate below and cast a shadow onto that plate. And that is the last of the four effects in this video. As you can see, it's fully adjustable. As with all my tutorials, play around with the ideas. The effects you can create are pretty much endless. The ones from this video are up on my Gumroad page. The link is in the description below. Grab them for free, just put a zero in the price tag. There will be a second video. While playing around with this, I played around with patterns inside the text and it can work. In order not to miss the next videos, please subscribe to my channel, click on the notification icon, leave a like and let me know what you want to see on this channel and I will see you again soon.